Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Two videos, two weeks in a row, we're on a roll, we'll make continue, yeah? Today, I got some other bits when I was away. If you've seen my Sephora Ultra haul, you will see that I picked up the Dose of Colours, the ZX K Tape palette and the two lip glosses. And I wanted to give them a video all to themselves because this palette is just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. So this is the Friendication palette by Desi Perkins and Katie, two of my favourite, favourite, favourite YouTuber, Instagrammer, Mua, Goal type situation people. The palette itself is beautiful. You've got a couple of mattes, just kind of classic warm tones, and then you've also obviously got a good variety of different shimmers. And when I say these are pigmented, these are insane. Like, I'll just swatch a few for you guys, and now you know that I am not good at swatching, but look at these, they're beautiful. And of course, in true Alan fashion, I've not got a wipe that I could just quickly wipe them away, so that's great. But anyway, yes, yeah, so I've got that. I picked up the two glosses because, like, I don't have enough lip gloss in my life, clearly, so I need to buy other ones, especially sparkly ones that I'll wear every day. So I had to pick up, I wanted to give them a full kind of moment on my YouTube on their own. I did this really nice, kind of warm, classic, blown out soft, glamorous, classic glam look. So yeah, please hit subscribe down below if you haven't already. I've just approached, or I'm approaching my one year YouTube anniversary, depending on when the video goes up. So that's super exciting, and I'm gonna do a video for that soon. So please hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss that. And if you wanted to see how I created this whole look from start to finish, which is glam and also beat, then please just keep on watching. Okay, so first things first, I'm just going in and prepping my skin using the Urban Decay B6 Prep Spray. This is my favourite face priming spray, I love it, I use it every day, so why mess with success, right? And then because I want a kind of dewy look, I'm actually kind of pressing the Urban Decay Drop Shot Oil into my skin. You can mix this into your foundation as well, I really like this mixed in with my all nighter foundation. I'm actually happy to mix it in with like, even like, really sheer foundations to give it a kind of glowy finish. I know you're watching thinking sheer foundation, Alan, but I have been changing it up recently, so yeah, and I take this just kind of everywhere, even on my lips and stuff, like to make sure my skin has got a super hydrated glow. For foundation today, I'm using an oldie but a goodie. This is one of my favourite, like, ride or die foundations that I know will always make my skin look popping, and this is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. I'm using the shade 5.0, just like I would in my all nighter foundation. This is a little bit more of a radiant finish and I really like it. This is probably like a hidden gem of a foundation. Like I don't think people know how good this foundation is. It literally makes your skin just look so airbrushed and so like radiant. I know that you guys are probably way used to seeing me wearing more of like a full coverage, like matte finish foundation, but this is my kind of go-to look. I really like a kind of glowy skin. And it's the kind of foundation I forget how much I love until I wear it again and then I'm like why am I not wearing this every day, it's so nice. Now for concealer we're changing it up, I'm going to be using the Too Faced Born This Way, but like the big one, the multi-use sculpting concealer, this is the really full coverage one. I'm using the shade Snow which is super light. Now this is a full ass coverage concealer, it's so full coverage that I'm not going to take it right under my eyes, I want to kind of more buff upwards towards the eyes. And one thing I've been loving doing it as well recently is as soon as I've done my foundation, I like to go over the top of it with a damp beauty sponge, which I have sprayed with my all nighter setting spray. I find that that just helps the makeup really last. It locks it in and also it takes away any texture in the skin. And recently I've been finding that my skin has been getting really bad again. I haven't changed into my skincare routine. I just have been a little bit lazier with it than what I would like to be. So <laughs> we've got that problem to deal with, but it's fine. We're gonna come out the other side looking popping. And if not, there's always cosmetic procedures, right? So I'm gonna do a little bit of cream bronzer. And of course, I'm using my Revolution Fast Base Foundation Stick. I'm using the shade F13. It gives me life. I just think it adds a really nice warmth to the skin without looking overly heavy and cakey. And creams, especially in like liquid concealers for bronzing, blend so nicely on top of that naked skin as well because it's not blended up against a really heavy base. So it just looks really like soft and natural. 
So I want to just kind of start setting my face just mainly the centre right now. I will go back in and highlight and stuff but I just don't want the concealer to have a chance to crease. This one is really full coverage but I have noticed it has a tendency to crease if you don't set it right away. So I'm going to go in with my Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder. The shade that I use is Pound Cake and I find it really nice for a kind of bright under eye. The only thing I don't like is the little kind of net sifter and it pulls out, you have to kind of tap it from the back to get any product out and then it puts out so much product but the powder is really nice, it gives you a really smooth like airbrushed under eye finish but it does have a really heavy scent to it which I know people say quite a lot of her products have got quite a heavy scent so I'm guessing that's Huda Babes' thing. So I actually really like the brush you get with this powder. It's really nice for kind of packing the product onto the under eyes. I have tried it with a beauty blender as well to set the under eyes with this powder but I find that the beauty sponge absorbs too much product and lays way too much down that it makes your under eyes look really thick and cakey and as much as your boy likes a full bake I don't want to look crepey and sometimes it can go that way so I like using the brush that she provides and I'm just kind of setting the whole centre of my face because I took the concealer to the middle, I'm making sure that I really set this area. Recently, gravity has not been my friend, and I'm noticing that like this area is coming down a lot, and I'm getting a lot of kind of gathering right here, especially of product. So maybe a little bit of a kind of I'm looking into kind of if I can maybe get this lifted or something, just because it's really getting me down and ruining my makeup. So I'm pressing that in. I'm really pressing that powder in. I'm letting it bake. So she does say she leaves it. It does say to leave to bake for a few minutes. So we won't be scared of a heavy bake at this point. And then what I'll do while this bake continues to bake is I'm going to actually go in and do my brows. I did touch on what I've been doing recently in my last video, but I want to do it a little bit more in depth. So I'm going to zoom you guys in so that you can see what I'm doing. So my first tip that I like to do to get that super fluffy natural hair stroke like brow is I like to use just a spoolie. This is the one on the other side of the Anastasia brow brush, which I don't have the number of because it's came off because it's two or three years old. And I'm just really pushing my hairs upwards with that. Now, getting my brows to this point in general has been a journey. I used to, like, sort my brows about here and draw them out. I have done, like, every brow scent imaginable, so don't come, don't, so don't judge me, we've all been there. I'll take my Urban Decay Lash Primer in Subversion. This has been a kind of go-to brow product of mine for... Ever since I stopped doing the kind of carved out brows, so whenever that would be, you tell me. You can look back at my videos and find it out. And I just use that to push the hair up. And I've really noticed as well by using the lash primer through my brows, like obviously it does like promote your lash growth, so I feel like it's kind of promoted my brow growth. It's definitely made my brows a lot like fuller and longer. Like my brows never used to grow past a certain point, but now I feel they do. And I really want to believe that this is the reason why. And then what I take is always just the Maybelline Brow Precise Fibre Filler. I use the shade Deep Brown in this. I really like this filler because the brush that it comes with is super like fine. So it's like a little flat tip. So you can use, I literally use just the tip of the brush and I push it through the hairs. I don't like to start right at the center of my brows, like right here, because I don't want as much product there. Because sometimes when I find when you do that, it can gather, so then you get kind of clumps of brow product, which we don't want. So I just like to push it upwards, outwards, and through the top. And then with what's left, just start to flick it up. And then a little tip that I learned recently from, um, a little tip that I learned recently is to kind of press the centre hairs down against the skin and push them up and you'll get a really nice kind of fluffy brow. It gives you that kind of soap brow finish and really nice spiky brows, which I am here for, without them looking drawn in. Because even when I started doing the kind of fluffier brow, I was proper drawn in like spikes and hair strokes and pretty much drawn in Sonic the Hedgehog on my face. So while it was nice to get myself into that moment, it still was a lot. Whereas now what I really like is how my brows are sitting it just looks like natural brow hairs, but really nicely defined. And if you had said to me a year ago when I started my YouTube that this would be like my way of doing brows a year later, I would probably have laughed in your face. So it's so funny to think how makeup changes and how much makeup trends change. And like I've had, the, I've been rocking like the full sculpted Insta brow for years now. So for this to be the new normal for me is very exciting because 
one, it's so much quicker, two, it just looks like you've got really nice eyebrows, they don't look heavily made up, and three, I just think they look so much nicer, so we do that, and then I can sometimes just leave them like this, I will usually just actually leave them pretty much as is this, like, just let them be super fluffy and spiky, but I'm going for quite a strong eye look today, so I want to make sure there's a little bit more definition, so I always just take a brow pencil, I'm going to use the Revolution Pro, this is like the microblading brow pencil, I think, and it's in one of the darker shades, they don't put the shades on the little thing just in the box, so I don't know what shade it is, but it's a really nice brow pencil, and I really like, like, just little thin brow pencils like this, but they all just kind of blend into one. I've got like a next one, I've got the urban ones of course. Yes, I just thought I would just do one eye off camera and then I can focus properly on this eye when I get back. So I think I'm actually going to do a proper zoom, zoom, zoom for this. So yeah, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to prime my eyes using the P. Louise base. I feel like it does just help make your eyes shadow really pop. And there's been a few palettes I've purchased recently which have been... Mmm... Controversial and the P. Louise base has actually really kind of saved the day and made them look a lot more popping. So I just thought I'll use this. But what I've been doing recently is using a fluffy brush to apply my eye base. I seen a video and it was someone was recreating like a Mitchell look, and that's what he does. And I actually really like it. I feel it gives a really nice airbrush finish to the skin, and it means that there's not too heavy a base that your eyeshadow is not going to blend. Okay, so I'm going to jump into the Dose of Colours Desi XK Friendcation Palette. The sparkle is real on this one. And the first colour I'm going to take, now, you guys know, that like this palette obviously we know is the most stunning thing known to man. It is beautiful. It has got everything you could possibly want from a palette. But... I, when I filmed this before, I did my usual like backwards blending technique with this. The shadows are really pigmented in this palette as it is, so you don't really need to do the backwards blending to intensify the colour payoff. And I actually found that because I'm going for the kind of warm brown looks, that doing the backwards blending it got quite mucky quite quickly. So I'm going to just do like an actual like transition colour. I know, not me at all, but today it'll work. So I'm starting off with this colour, which is called Necessary. And it's a really nice transition colour, which looks actually really pale on in the pan but when you put it on it's a really nice warm brown so don't be fooled I've noticed with this palette especially with the mattes the colours do show up a lot more deep than how they initially look in the pan so just be careful with that when you're applying using this palette the pigmentation is really strong and do you know what's really unusual about this palette for me to love so much the browns are not warm <laughs> Well, they're warm, but they're not like Alan Craig warm, where they're usually like heavy, heavy warm. So I'm just kind of swatching the colour basic, just back and forward and building the colour up. Now, doing this on an unset base can often be risky because you move the base, but that's why that fluffy brush technique beforehand really works. Then I'm going to switch over to a little MAC 221S brush. This is the lifesaver for my hooded eyes. I'm going to dip into the shade Churro. Oh, I could go with some Churros right now. Oh... And I'm just taking that into the crease and I'm not trying to blend at first. It's all about getting that colour laid down. This is a really dark brown. Like darker than what it would appear initially. Because it looks in the pan like a kind of bronzy terracotta but it's actually proper, proper dark brown. But we're not mad at that. And then I'm using the same colour on my first brush, the fluffy brush, the Morphe R something. I don't know, the code has come off. And just window wipe putting that in. Now having the lighter colour in at first will be nice is nice because it helps that churro have something to blend into and create more of a gradient. When I tried this before, I was just blending churro out onto itself and it didn't do what I wanted at all. So once I'm happy with how my blend is coming together, because it is a proper like brown, classic brown smoke, so you do have to put in your blending time. To get it how you want it and get that really nice like blown out way of doing things and once you get that kind of crease looking really nice that's when you could deepen it up a little bit and that's when I'm going to take this colour Cheens which is a really nice like dark brown kind of like a good black alternative and I'm just sticking with that 221S and just kind of placing that in the inner and outer corners of the eyes first of all but I want the colour to be really laid down there 
and then I'm going to just blend it out into the crease. So I want my crease to be really defined. I'm taking some more of that P. Louise base on a fluffy brush and I'm just going to kind of start to pat that on the lids. I'm not going crazy for cut creases today. I want it to be really soft and blown out and like effortless glam. Like a look that can just take you to anywhere you're going. So I'm going to just kind of stamp that all over the crease but I'm not worried about precision at this point. And using the fluffy brush does a, gives you a really nice kind of fluffy edge so that then I can just take a 221S again and just take a little bit more of that churro colour and just kind of push the edges in a little bit. Now I want to take a lot of time here to get it right and just kind of really use a gentle touch. I'm using a really gentle touch with that and then just kind of take it all over the lid and you'll see how that's giving me a spotlight just like that. So easy peasy spotlight eye, what is not to love? And what is definitely club is this colour here. So this colour here is called, this colour here is called Just a Kiss. And when I first seen this palette, I was like, this is a bit of me. It's a really nice kind of nude sparkle. It reminds me a lot of a makeup geek one that I've got that I really can't remember the name of. And I actually don't know where it is, so I'll have to look it out. And for that, I'm just going to use my finger and just kind of wipe it all over the crease. And don't worry if this comes a, bit, a little bit out of where you place that concealer. We're not really minding that because this is not, like I said, a super structured, like carved out, technical look. This is meant to be something just really soft and just really nice and glam that's not going to look too much, he says, with a full smoky liner and a humongous lashes. And then, you know, of course, the Alan Craig favourite thing to do is take your favourite matte over your favourite shimmer to blend it. Just, I really like that trick. I just think it adds so much dimension to the eyes. Now this is when you struggle if you do one at a time because you have to really remember what you did in that first eye or it could all go horribly wrong. I'm going to kind of leave all of this and go into some smoky liner. So I've been using gel liner recently. Um, I actually prefer gel liner for the lower lash line and liquid for top but I want this look to be really smudgy looking. So I'm going to go in with my Inglot JLo Midnight Gel Liner. I much, much, much prefer this to the Inglot 77 Classic Gel Liner. I just feel like for me this is more workable and it's a nicer black. So I'm just going to line the light, lash line but I'm keeping it really close. Yeah, so just keep it really close to the lash line and line those lashes and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the darkest brown shade again from the palette and just really kind of run that over the top of the gel liner just to smoke it out. I don't want the gel liner to look super black because I want the eyes to look really bright. So I'm going to put a little bit more powder on my under eyes before I start smoking out the lower lash line just because I'm using a black shadow that I did think gave me a little bit of fallout so I don't want that. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to start by taking Sheens again. I'm blowing that out, just getting that down and then taking my fluffy brush with the lighter shade again and using that as a blend and this is the point where you would start to pull that shadow out because I really want that nice winged out look with my shadow. Then a little bit of the darker brown again and then I'm going to dip into a black shadow. You can use any black shadow for this point. The one that I have to hand is the one in my Mahusu favourite palette, the Morphe 39A. I really, really like the black shadow in that palette. I always go on and on about how much I love it. It's just a really nice, almost creamy black. I'm taking that really close to the lash line. Make sure that's really well blended. And then I'm going to just tight line my lower lash line. So I'm using that JLo gel liner again. So there's really no attractive way to like, tight line my lower lash line. So I'm not going to do that on camera. I'm going to just do that off camera, pop on some lashes, and I'll meet you right back here. Right, so lashes are on and they just really add to the look. I won't lie, this one is doing something crazy because I found it stuck to a palette and it got a bit crushed, but anyone who says that they keep their lashes in perfect condition is a liar. So there's that. So I'm in a little bit more of that lovely Just A Kiss. It just pops a little bit in the inner eye. This look is looking super popping, it's super glam. Obviously, I have had this foundation on for a bit now and I used a little bit of the bake powder. So I want to just kind of reawaken my skin. So I'm going to douse myself in Fix Plus. You know I like to soak myself before finishing a look off. So we'll do that. Oh, this one's coming to the end of its life. It just splurted me. You guys know we like to highlight when still wet. 
I'm going to go in with my favourite highlighter, which is of course the Doll Beauty Doll Light in the shade Shine Bright. So Shine Shine Bright is the kind of darker of the two. It really reminds me of Opal by Becca, but a little bit warmer, but not quite as warm as the Champagne Pop. So it is a really nice highlight, but it's not for the faint hearted. So if you do not like an intense looking highlight, then this might not be the one for you. But it is the one for me, and that's the most important thing. It is the definition of popping. But I like to do my highlight before my bronzer, just because there's nothing I hate more than that kind of like, when your highlight is just kind of sitting on top and it's like a stripe. At least if you do your bronzer, it's the same kind of idea as doing the matte shadow and the the shimmer shadow with the matte on top, it gives it a nicer blend and a more kind of graded 3D effect. So we'll do that, and that's of course the highlight number one. We're not just doing one highlighter, don't worry. We don't do that here. Um, I'll highlight my nose with this one though, because the one I'm going to use on top is proper blended, and you might find it too much. So we'll take a little bit. Down the bridge of the nose. Almost drawing an exclamation point. A little bit through here because I've noticed that my gal Desi Perkins does that. Don't mind that squeaking noise, that's Harvey in the back there with his toys. And a little bit on the tip of the nose. So a little dot, it's going to look extra but don't worry, I will blend that out with my highlighter brush. If you want to tone it down you could do it with a powder brush instead. Then I'm going to bronze and I'm going to bronze it, I'm not going to do like a heavy contour today, it's more about a bronzy sculpted look. I don't need to explain too much about this bad boy. It is my favourite bronzer. I use it in every video. This is the Urban Decay Beach Bronzer in the shade Bronze. If there's any other bronzers you guys would recommend, but hit me up because I'm always going to try a new one. But I always go back to this one, so we'll see if there's any use. And I'm just kind of pushing that into the cheeks. I like to always push the bronzer into the cheeks now rather than swiping because I find that sometimes a swiping motion can like move your foundation underneath and give you patchiness and we don't want that. And just make sure that everything looks super bronzy and glowy. And then speaking of glowy bronzers, I'm actually going to go in with this one from MAC. This is, I don't know if you can still get this, it's a extra dimension bronzing powder and it's called Delphic. It's like a really nice shimmery bronzer and it's got a really weird texture to it. It's almost like a gel. So it's a really nice bronzer with a slightly shimmery finish. Not shimmery, but just more of a kind of radiant finished bronzer. So we'll use that to kind of sculpt and this is a really kind of blown out like bronzy look. So everything should be really soft so I'm not taking crazy sweeping motions. I'm just kind of really carving out the face with that. So we're getting bronzy and rather than contour what I'm going to do is just carve out my cheeks with a little bit of powder and for that we'll go back into our Huda Beauty Easy Bake and we'll just carve that out and that will give me the definition of a contour without actually doing a contouring powder. And then I'm going to clean away that bake from the jawline. I don't want to leave that on too long, just enough to kind of give me a little bit of a sculpt. So I'm now going to go in with highlight number two just to kind of top off my highlight and for that I'm going to go in with another Doll Beauty Doll Light and this one is in the shade Like a Diamond which is the really light one. So I'm just taking a touch of that and just putting it right on the high points. So right here, and right here, and right here, and right here. And I just think adding a little bit extra of a more popping highlight on top, not that the first one wasn't popping of course, but just a little bit more of a highlight will make it look super popping. So I'm going to set my complexion in place and for that of course, I'll be using my Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. For lips, I picked up a couple of the Desi X Katie glosses. So I've got Over the Top, which was from their first collection, which was proper iconic, sparkly, hoish nude gloss. And then the new one is called The Most, which is more of a kind of pearlescent sparkle. These two are looking super bomb. I'm really looking forward to trying these out. But first, I'm going to put on a lipstick and liner just to add a base. So for a lip liner, I'm going to be using a very well-loved with the colour runoff stripped down by MAC, outlining my lips with that liner and then kind of feathering it in. So there is a lipstick that I have kind of fallen in love with recently and it is the MAC Cosmetics X Jamie Genevieve lipstick. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful nude lipstick. It's really cool to see someone from Glasgow literally doing a collaboration with MAC. Like, 
can we talk? That's insane. So obviously I got the two glosses and I don't know what one to go with, but I think I'm going to go with the over the top gloss. I think it'll go really nicely against this nude lip. Oh, hello. This is really nice. You know I like a glossy lip? This one is just stunning. So nice. It just looks so, like, I totally see how it's got glitter, but it's not too glittery that it's a glittery gold. It's just a really nice gloss. I really like this gloss. It is looking popping. My lips look juicy. And there we have it, guys. That is the finished look. I am buzzing how this came together. I think this is going to be a kind of go-to glam for me. I think this is so nice. So I'll definitely be recreating this again with other colours from the palette. Like we said, there's obviously so many other colours in here that I really want to try. So like the blues are screaming my name. I really like look at this kind of pink one as well. But the blue, like I want to do a makeup with the blue. So watch this space. The blue look that I'll be able to do will probably be on my Instagram, which is somewhere going to be up here. Please hit give me a good follow on Instagram, follow me on Snapchat and Twitter too and we can become best friends and yeah if you like this video please 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 give it a good thumbs up. Like I said subscribe, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Snapchat right here and yeah I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching guys. Bye!